I'm really excited to introduce my guest today, Mr. Choi Peng Yu. He is the CEO of Petwell. He has been a Vistage member since 2017. Now, to many of us, Petwell is a household name, but it also exports to multiple countries, 15 in fact. So thank you so much, uh, Choi, for spending time to uh, do this interview with me. Thanks, India. I want mm. to go back to the very beginning sure. when you started the company. This mm. was in 2006. Yeah. What made you start Padwell? Was it a personal calling or did you see a business opportunity that you just couldn't resist? It's very coincidence. Huh? So I, I actually an uh, accountant by profession. Mm -hmm. So I left the practice in 2002 and uh, got an opportunity to board over uh, distribution companies in 2002. So uh, during that period, we actually have inherited an agency which is also dealing with pet care. See? So after four years in the business, we think that this is a very good business, a happy business. So, and, uh, and we started our own brand then, you know. Pets is actually a fun and nice business to go in here. Yeah. So what started off as like a coincidence has turned out to be quite a pet empire. We were just talking earlier, you said that now you're in the manufacturing, yeah. uh, distribution, logistics, yeah. e-commerce. Yeah. Uh, talk to us about that vision, you know, when you started in 2006 and now having pet world as an empire as it is, what led you to grow it to become like that? Well, I think, uh, like I said, the uh, pet business is actually a happy business. Eh? So along the way, we built uh, our capabilities mm -hmm. uh, surrounding the pets, you know. So that's where the uh, distribution capabilities, marketing capabilities, uh, obviously warehousing and logistics is one of it. You know, so, so that we can deliver our cargo to the consumers more efficiently. Mm -hmm. So that is where we build the capability along the way. Yeah. Okay, now speaking of uh, getting to customers, I found it very interesting that yeah. you took a very big risk during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Six months into the pandemic, you built a 50 million ringgit new factory. Yeah. Now that was when everything was under lockdown yeah. and people were staying in. What led you to take that decision? Well, our lovely furry friends are starving, is it? So during the period, I think uh, it's a world disruption of supplies. Uh. So we barely have enough uh, food for the animals, you know. Uh, that six months in the pandemic, I take a very bold move. I think that this is the right time for me to invest into it. One mm. of the most advanced pet factories in this region, you know. So fully automatic. Uh, the mill tower, we only operate with seven, seven people, right? So, and uh, and uh, we took a very fast uh, track, you know, it took us only 10 months to get it built out. And uh, we commercialized it uh, 60 days from, uh, from completions. So the total project only take us about one year. Yeah. So it was a very big risk that you take? Uh, yeah, I mean, for, the, for, for, the, for our animal, right? So I think that if I don't take that risk, I, will have pro I may have our business already because uh, when the animal have no food, they will convert it to another brand and uh, and for them to come back, it may take me an hour, a while, see. Mm. Yeah. So it was also a strategy to keep yeah. your market share. Yep. Okay. Mm. So that bold move paid off. Yeah. It turned out really well for you. Yeah. Can you think of a time in your career when you took a big risk and it did not pay off? Well, I think that when they made as make my risk appetite a bit a bit bigger, lah. You know, for the last twenty odd years or so in the professions, I don't take so much out big risk. But I do. I mean, as an accountant, uh, uh, people always say that we are square, you know, we are risk averse, but I, I am a different breed though. So I, I do. I do take risk, but not as big as this round. But uh, over my career, I think like the God treated me quite well, you know, so I hardly have any major uh, failure in the business. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful to hear. Yeah. Well, then, can you then tell us then what is your proudest achievement so far in your career? My proudest achievement, yeah. wow, I think that I built a fantastic facilities and, uh, and production house for pets, you know. I started my business in 2002 as a distribution house. I, I, I built a pet brand in 2006 and today I must say that uh, the business has grew uh, more than 1,000 times mm. from day one to where I am today, you see. So uh, I've been building capabilities, I've been building operations surrounding the groups. Uh. So, from a barely 10 staff in 2002 today, I have 450 associates uh, working with me, you know, yeah. It, like you said, the pet industry or the pet food industry has seen a lot of changes uh, yeah. in recent years. 
uh, pet owners, I think, are also becoming more health conscious. Sure. Uh, yeah. And I think pet world has done has gone in that direction you know, yep. to be more transparent about the food that's in uh, mm. in the pet food. Yep. Um, better quality. Can you talk to us about that direction that you took? Oh yeah, I think that we built brand with our heart. You know, so uh, not only in terms of providing the the best nutritional food for the pets. But we also taking into account of the environmental sustainabilities. Uh. You know, uh, I always tell my staff, Queen Elizabeth II is you, everybody know that is a corgi lover, yeah. right? So, uh, unfortunately, she outlived all her corgis. So she had fourteen generations of uh, corgis, and and thirty four of them. So right before she died, she almost gave up not to have any more dogs anymore. So that kind of sadness. Uh, a pet owner have right mm -hmm. of uh, not having the pets have a longer life is actually very painful. Yeah, so uh, I still remember when I started the business uh, about twenty years ago. So the pet's life is about seven years. Mm -hmm. Today, on average, pet's life is about seventeen years. So mm -hmm. uh, what we endeavor to is actually to provide a balanced nutritional diet so that we can hopefully to see the pets can live up to twenty seven. Uh, years within the next five to ten years, you know. So, uh, yep, humanizations, use the best qualities of uh, raw ingredients is always what we champion. Mm -hmm. uh. So, apart from that, uh, we also champion the uh, sustainability side. So, we use a lot of uh, upcycle meat, meat uh, uh, ingredients, we use insect protein, we are one of the pioneers in insect proteins. So, all these are the sustainable uh, uh, raw material we do so that we have enough food for them in years to come. Uh. So mm -hmm. we are the pioneer in terms of uh, sustainability, in terms of uh, humanization of pet food. So. Would you say those are the things that set Pet World apart from your competitors? Yes, yeah. We are very innovative, we are very creative. Yeah. So we launch more uh, new product than, than our competitors. You know? So we're championing the feeding experience. So we fit our, our furry friends differently. You know, for example, that. Uh, two years ago, we launched grilled saba. Not mm -hmm. only saba fish, but grilled it so that there will be a smoky smell into it. You know, so we're topping our foods with our uh, monitor flakes and all kind of uh, feeding experience that we do. Lah. So uh, it's not only providing the best nutrition, but the experience into it is important. Okay. So we are very creative. Like you said, it is a very happy industry because oh, yeah. you want to care for your pets, and pets are increasingly seen as a family yeah. member. Yeah. You spoke about pet humanization. Yeah. What are some of the big trends that you see will happen in the pet uh, industry in the coming years? Food are getting more and more sophisticated. You know, mm -hmm. there's a study in US. Uh, the pets having a more healthy nutrition compared to the human, the pet owner himself. So you know, the pet owner will go to the Pet shops scrutinize all the labor behind it. On the other hand, uh, and the pet owner taking for yourself. yeah, <laughs> they go for nuggets, they go for sausages, and all this processed food. They say so. The trend is actually a lot more and more sophisticated ingredients. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, that we are we, lately we just launched as SKU that we actually putting in uh, red color red sweet potatoes. Why do we use that? The red sweet potato have uh, features of uh, uh, releasing energies uh, slowly, right. so they have a very low GI. So we make sure that the pets is actually not obese and things like that. So we preserve energy. So you have gone that far in terms of uh, uh, sophistication. Uh. So very much humanized. So lately we actually brought in a snack from uh, Japan and they actually produce 100% human, human grade. So they actually produce from the human factories. Mm -hmm. mm. So sometimes uh, I always joke with my, my team that we, when we have uh, uh, meetings, you know, so we serve ourselves with the uh, dog snacks from Japan. <laughs> Wow, it's nice. Yeah. Well, I can attest to that because I have a cat and oh. she loves uh, your food, pro diet especially. Yeah. Um, I do want to uh, talk a bit about leadership. Of sure. course, being a, a founder and CEO mm. for 17 years already now, it's, mm. it's a long time, it's a long yeah. time. And you have accomplished so much. What do you think um, are the leadership skills or vital skills that's important to be someone in your industry? Well, uh, Continuous learning mm -hmm. is one of the things that I always champion. And uh, persistence and perseverance, which is important, are quite empathetic. So. Over the years, I treated my team. It's like part of my family, you know. So, so we, we share the happiness, uh, we share the uh, rewards when we, when we make it there, you know. So 
Uh, yep, I have uh, set up a very nice uh, hierarchies in terms of uh, organized structure, and uh, I uh, not inclusive of myself, you know. So we actually uh, continuously uh, send them for trainings mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that they are up to the latest management skill and all this, you know. So yeah, I think that is very important as a leader. Yeah. People is of course the most important. Yep. People is that what drives success, right? Right. Okay. Then you talk about continuous learning. I do wonder personally for yourself, how do you continuously stay ahead of the competition, mm. stay uh, motivated to keep learning about new things? Well, I, I, <coughs> I think that uh, the knowledge keep on evolving, you know. So uh, if we want to stay relevant, we have to keep learning. I mean, uh, which stage is actually a very good platform, you know, that uh, last year I have opportunity. I mean, in the period that I'm very busy uh, dealing with uh, pandemics and also building my new factories, so this Stanford's uh, uh, leadership program comes into pictures. I was selected to mm -hmm. participate into it. So it was very intensive, you know, a 10 months course that every Saturday, Sunday, I had to go back home and do readings, doing assignments. I had to col uh, collaborate uh, with the international uh, research member as well. That's interesting, you know, so I. I, I benefited a lot uh, in that program, uh, even though it's very stressful. Uh, that I virtually have no weekend at all for, for that 10 months, you see. But it's good, you know. So I make good use of that and uh, I share with my, my team members. And uh, I, I suppose that uh, we are doing well, you know, but, for, but we are not the best yet, okay. right? In order to be world class, I think that we need to keep learning. So, so yeah. Mm. In your definition, what is world class? Ooh. World class means uh, you have to lead the categories mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, the category that you are in. So whether it's a marketing, whether it's a, a human resources, and of course the ability to escalate in your top line, mm -hmm. as well as the uh, ability to, to earn a strong bottom line is important. So. Mm, okay. Mm. so currently you are exporting to 15 markets. Yep. What's the next plan? Are you planning to scale? Uh, more than that? Oh yes, I, I think that currently we are expanding uh, very aggressively overseas. Mm -hmm. I think Malaysia is already quite saturated. So we are actually uh, in a shopping spree as well. Mm -hmm. So we are looking for some good uh, brands or manufacturing factories for us to buy overseas, okay. for us to scale up. Yeah. All right. Just a couple of final minutes that we have. I yep. do want to ask you a bit more about your participation with this stage. Mm. How has you know, being uh, in a network with, with like-minded individuals, other CEOs, how has it helped you as a leader? How has it shaped your leadership mm. skills? I think it's an open secret. Uh, being a boss, being a CEO uh, is always lonely. I mean, everybody know that. And uh, uh, yeah, this stage is a platform for us to share. And we are, we, we, we have a lot of colleagues that which is uh, not in our same industry. So the problem that we face is also a problem that face, you know. So then uh, we always, I personally always look forward for the, the monthly uh, uh, gathering that we have to share knowledge, to, share, uh, to express our frustration and see what are the alternative, you know. So I like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a good platform for me to be there. And um, this stage is also uh, brought in a lot of resources, sometimes it's an eye opener to us, you know, mm -hmm. because uh, we think that we are good right. and there are someone better there, right? So therefore, it's always a, a, a good learning platform for me. A reality check almost. Oh, yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Thank Choi, you, for sharing your story and also yep. your insights and the best of luck to you. Thank you so much. Thank yep. you.